the pale blue dot. That was, a bit, that was a bit we were supposed to say hello. hello. So, hello. 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 Welcome, both of you. Thanks. Mind gold power couple. <laughs> it's self proclaimed. We, we, as soon as we walked in here, we were like, we have to be called. No, we didn't do that. No. Yeah, they did, guys. It was real embarrassing. Yeah, it was, it was strange. This won't last for a long time, this podcast. <laughs> Just get out of my house. <laughs> Thank you so much for spending a Sunday with Thank us you. and us. Always oh, me and Graham. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Sunday is actually our relationship day, though, which is really funny. Oh so. my god, I love that you have relationship day. We do. <laughs> Can we start with telling, you know, obviously within reason, there might be something you don't want to share yeah. about <laughs> relationship day. Um, we do pray. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit embarrassing. <laughs> that's that's we, awkward. We yeah. spent five hours praying. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it was it was your idea, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. Just a way to. Just a very simple way, because obviously life gets in the way for everyone, and um, Sean was like, we should just have a day where we just exclusively focus on us, just doing yeah. things that we want to do. And, and they say, force you to drive to Richmond. And yeah. <laughs> and at least we're, we're talking about us. We're talking about you ourselves. Are. Yeah. We are. Yeah. So it's, it's classed as a relationship day. But it's true. Yeah, I can't even remember how I came up with that. I think because... Saturdays and Sundays we were both planning stuff and I'm like when are we gonna like see each other because mm. we're oh, working planning stuff separately yeah yeah and we we're just working weird hours like, yes. just, like morning and evening and we just never saw each other mm. so I was like we just need a day where it's just the two of us we make zero plans and try not to have our phones and stuff and then it just turned into like a real proper relationship day didn't it it's yeah it's a couple epic. of constants yeah, it's good it's yeah, really it was cool yeah it. Mm. we love it we're literally obsessed with it <laughs> Oh, that's cool, man. And Graham and I sort of have like a relationship morning. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and that's Sunday morning because I sleep in. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it means that we get to snuggle. Yeah. Um, every other morning, there's none of that. I, I know. Because I get up and go to work. So that... <laughs> We do it's that the Graham Abby. day. So the Graham, Graham day. day. Yeah. The Graham Sunday. That's so fun. We do that with Abby too on a Sunday. We do. Well, it's more you do. I just get kicked out of bed. Yeah, true. Yeah. It's a bit unfortunate. Oh. Yeah. Oh it, relationship relationship day is actually more dog and Siobhan day. <laughs> and Tom just gets put in the backyard. Now you just pull along. <laughs> yeah. We basically got a backyard so that I can pull in the backyard and the dog can just use the toilet. <laughs> oh my God. If we could train her to do that. Jesus we can Christ. apparently, I think. Oh God. We don't Teach a dog to use the toilet. Well, I know that's that you can awesome. do it with cats. It's on YouTube. You can do it with cats. Yeah, you yeah. can't walk them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've been Put seeing the struggles. Around. Fuck, it's so good. Yeah. Um. <laughs> anyway. 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 Relationships. Yes. Is why mm. we're here. Um. Not only to talk about your guys' relationship, but I mean, I guess your own, like, struggles in terms of relationships. I guess mm. what you've learnt along the way and how, I guess, you've gotten to the point that you're obviously in... Uh, seemingly healthy and happy. Yeah. It's us. We're very, very depressed together. Uh, You're very good <laughs> actors. Yes, exactly. Um, but yeah, because I guess for me personally, like I've only, I only feel I've just gotten to the point in life that I actually feel happy mm. in a relationship, mm. um, which is ridiculous because I'm 33 years old. Not really. 31. 31. 31. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Same. Age is a number. Same. Yeah. Same. And, and mm. I don't know, like, why why is it that it's just, I mean, it's so fucking hard. Yeah. Um, I mean, we could make, obviously, a lot of jokes and innuendo about things being hard. Yes, very true. <laughs> no. Not in a long-term don't, relationship, don't, you could Don't give Tom the fucking go hard in a bad, Hard in a bad way. Yes. To be, yes. To be clear. Yes. Um, yes. Also, my dad listens to this podcast, so we might want to get to him. Hi. Hi, Dad. Is he in a long-term relationship? He is with my mum. Oh, so you'll know all about it. it. Yeah. We should get you should get them on the podcast. Oh by god, the way. Mr. Fox. Yeah, and just Mr. ask them the long term goals. Yeah, very yeah. true. Take the mics back home for Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Do please do. Seriously, that'd be amazing. I want to hear. You so should. My like when Dad came on my podcast, I loved it. It was yeah. just good to have a conversation with him. And I said to him at the end of it, you know, this is fantastic for um, you know, when you're long gone and my grandkids are around like oh tell us about your dad and you're like well you can't just press play for you this is who he was cool. like yeah we used to do things called podcasts yeah i know that's so true yeah what? people used to wear glasses when they couldn't see <laughs> now we just get it fucking vaccinated when you do <laughs> oh my god injection right in the eye i've got laser eye surgery so same basically Shit. yeah it's fucking best you used it? to wear glasses i did that's see, right there you go wow yeah forgot about that yeah it was like a few years ago Fix game, everything up. Fucking game changer. Wow. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Getting back to it. 
So, yeah. yeah. You want to kick things off? Go on. Oh my go god, I need like a whole fucking day to go through struggles. <laughs> um, yeah, I gotta do even know where to start. We've like, I think we've just got to the place now. I always think the struggle comes from two people with completely separate lives doing their completely own thing that they love and then or hate and then bringing it together <laughs> oh, <hi. laughs> yes. and bringing it together and then it's like you've got to combine the two mm. yeah and it's like obviously the hardest thing but the most rewarding thing and they say that like your relationships are your biggest test in life so if you can like get through the, all the testing part which i feel like we've done now <laughs> we've been through all the tests and hopefully <laughs> mm-hmm. they um and then you just come out of the other side like i mean because you've learned all the lessons so, yeah. yeah they just come out the other side really good and i think as much as you're not the time i'm like so thankful for all like the shit relationships i had because they kind of gave oh, me like, lessons same. to the same yeah i don't feel that you can really appreciate someone in your life who is like a fucking absolute legend unless you've experienced the opposite yeah it's so that, true right isn't yeah. that weird oh, though yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's very Honestly, good. Honestly, you never think you'll be thankful when you're in that really shit time, and then it, you come out the other side and you're like, "Oh my god, I'm so glad he was a wanker." <laughs> yeah. You know, my probably... thoughts as well. All the guys I used to date, <laughs> fucking hell. I was <laughs> just thinking, there's probably someone out there going, "Oh, thank God I dated that awful fucking Sarah." <laughs> just, uh, I just, I only know true happiness now in comparison yeah, to her. Yeah, so true. I know. <laughs> No, yeah, but probably. You, you're totally right. <laughs> probably, most yeah. likely. I, yeah. I think people need to um, get a bit more real. I think when it comes to relationships and the whole um, pursuit of happiness, I think can sometimes really ruin um, what what a relationship is because the truth of it is, it's two you know solidified to an extent egos coming together to share their lives, and there's going to be some back and forth of how to mediate that new ground. And if you don't argue and tell the truth. Um, you know, when you don't like even the tiniest things to try to figure out how you guys can live together, there's going to be a lot of clash and a lot of resentment. Resentment. And then everything will piss you off about the other person, even if it's just completely irrational, like a weird clicking noise or something they do with their tongue. It's like... what you do, mate? No. (laughs) She probably just like... (laughs) Yeah, this gives me a chance to just really just unload all the shit I'm annoyed at Shimon about. But it's true, like, if you don't tell the truth... And just say, oh, I'm really annoyed at you for this or whatever. Like, you get annoyed over really dumb things that you're not even annoyed about. Can know? I just say that's the same for all relationships? Yeah, like, for friendships, sure. family. Like, if you don't tell people, like, I would say argue, but discuss what you're not annoyed about. Yeah. It just turns into resentment and then everything ends up annoying you about that person. Yeah. I think that's, like, a goal for everything in life. And you kind of end up getting to the point <laughs> where you're like, you know what? Fuck you. Yeah. yeah and just cutting your... Cutting but because you've not discussed never it. discussed it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Whereas if you just said, "Hey, like it kind of annoys me when you whatever mm-hmm. make that clicking noise." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That fucking clicking noise. Where did that come from? I don't know. Well, I, who does I that? want to know who clicks. Is there one of your ex girlfriends out there listening to it going, so, "Fuck him"? I love this like podcast. <laughs> yeah. Who does that? At least you had an issue. <laughs> who does? It does do that. Yeah, I don't you know, know what? It's like Seinfeld, right? Yeah. And like everyone they date, they always break up because there's some <laughs> like really trivial like fault in the person. Yes. But I totally understand that because I've had like epic arguments. I remember I had one boyfriend. This is years ago, and we broke up because we had an argument over which way you drive into the subway car park. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, do you turn do you turn left before the island or yeah. after? And it ended up being like, I can't fucking stand this anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm done. And we like Look, it's up. not the cookies. And it probably was like it's a true. combination of everything that led to that one argument. Yeah. It's yeah. so silly. But yeah, probably. It would probably mm. stem from something like far deeper than like you know, me being right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was right. Even though you were right, of course. Well, obviously was. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, you know, obviously there were bigger issues in that relationship other than how you drive into the car park. <laughs> yes. But, I mean, I, I suppose that's just a testament to, like, the niggles that, you know, mm-hmm. you end up end up turning into these big blow-ups because you've not actually addressed the underlying yeah. issue, like, at the start, maybe. So yeah. true. Yeah, so yeah absolutely. True. And, and I think as well, you know, not even just in relationships, but... In life as well, you have to think about what you want, you know, because sometimes people get into the relationship for the wrong reason. Um, and then it's just like, oh, I don't know. They're trying to like, you know, 
have a look at and see if that's going to work for them. Like they values. don't even know what they... Yeah, well, values, values are very good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, 100%. Values obviously determine how you act and how you're going to raise kids and where you want to live and what you want to do. And, yeah. you know, if like, if, if my, if I valued getting work done at a lot higher, you know, than I did the relationship, I'd still want to be in the relationship, but I'd be resentful of these Sundays. Yeah. And then I would start to get work. pissed off at you. Yeah. But, um... I think values are really important because values determine how you're going to progress in life, you know, and a relationship is just two people coming together to grow together and move forwards. Um, it's not, it's not where you get stuck, you yeah. know? And I yeah. think people give up way too early. Can yeah. I say, I heard this like amazing quote by a guy that actually was doing, I think he was doing a relationship podcast and he said like when you've been with someone for a certain amount of time and you literally take for him he was married divorce off the cars like divorce is not on the cars which Jenny? mean yeah which mm -hmm. means you will do whatever you can to make that relationship work obviously if there's nothing major like going on you can like divorce is not even a thing so you're forced to make it work and i thought that was so brilliant like yeah. i really love that so if you're with someone and it's like just a constant battle um and there's like a way you can work it out and obviously if there's not whatever but i thought that was such a good like thing to do you yeah know, like a thing to say sorry or a thing to work at it's a good way to look at it because <laughs> it's your you know if they're telling the truth and if they're honest and assertive enough they're going to be your complete button trigger presser you know oh, God, and for good reason as well because you're not a perfect person and you fuck up and you don't see things and um if you can stick it out, I think that's one of the good ideas about what Jesse was saying in that podcast. Mm. It's like, this marriage is, divorce is like off the cards, which means that we have two options. We can sort ourselves out, which means sort the relationship out and continue to progress. Or we can just have the same fight every single day for the next 80 years and then die a miserable to life, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's a good way of looking at it. If you get to the stage when you've done that and there's still some issues in the relationship, then by all means, we live in a free society. So break yeah, up you know but yeah. at least it gives you that opportunity to be like okay i need to at least check myself first and if there's still something going on like you said if there's deception or mm. we need to um you know live in different areas or whatever it is then you know thank you for the time but not giving up too easily is really cool by giving yourself that restriction mm. yeah yeah i, like I, it. Sure. I thought that was great yeah, I think the values thing, like, that's really important and that's something that I've realised, like, recently, because I think previously I would, like, you know, maybe be attracted, initially attracted to a partner based upon, like, a hobby or, like, an interest mm -hmm. or something like that, right? Yeah. Um, and that would be kind of the, the basis of that relationship. But knowing me and how I change my mind in terms of my hobbies and my interests, <laughs> there's not really any point basing a relationship with somebody on, like, CrossFit. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. or on being a vegan. Yeah. Or, you yeah. know, something like that, right? Yeah. Because if you decide, you know, actually, CrossFit's dumb, or hang on, I like meat, yeah. then you don't have that thing anymore. That's and you're kind of left with this dickhead who does dumb shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So you know what I mean? And yeah. it's expensive stuff yeah it's yeah. expensive barbells yeah. you know <laughs> yeah. it's not what i would do anymore <laughs> exactly so i think what i found in like like ending a, an earlier relationship this year and just realizing like i'm really going after the complete wrong the wrong person because i'm like basing my you know decisions on stuff that doesn't is actually irrelevant mm -hmm. yeah. you know and yeah. what i decided that i really wanted in a partner is someone who was kind yeah um and someone who was honest and someone who um was passionate mm. about something mm. and yeah. it didn't have to be weightlifting yeah yeah you know <laughs> or graham it's just, yeah it, you know it's, it's good to be about, passionate about graham but, it, but you know he is yes he actually is he loves graham but you know, I just guess I changed my whole. I was like, I don't give a fuck if you train. I don't care how yeah. if I, you can lift more than me or less than me. Like I don't care. Yeah. I just want you to be like a kind, honest person. Yeah. And like that's all. Mm -hmm. But you don't figure that shit out until oh you God. like go with all the the shitty ones first. You know. <laughs> well, it's true though. All you don't. You yeah. All of them. <laughs> All the shitty ones. Yeah, literally. That's how you learn your lessons. So it's true. Yeah. 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 yeah I've, then I've... you don't know what's good. Oh, I mean, I've had a different history. Like, I've never, yeah, I was never have. with any, um, you know, bad women or anything. Like, bad women. Yeah, like, well, hashtag just hashtag bad women. Hashtag bad women. This could be the name. <laughs> like of the it. episode name. Yeah. Oh my god. It was. I think it was for <laughs> me. Like, what? Yeah, I know. I just, um, I did. I needed to, some time to figure out what I wanted as well, mm. um, what I wanted in a relationship, and I was also very um, 
scared of talking to girls for like a really long time, you know. Um, we are crazy and yeah. scary and some of us are bad. Yeah, <laughs> bad women. Yes, they freak me out. <laughs> yeah. No, but my, my, um, my kind of, well, the way we got together was we met each other at a CrossFit gym mm. and um, I actually was quite intimidated by Siobhan because she's very Fair. confident. Yeah, and Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm is like, scary. what do you mean intimidated by me? <laughs> well, you're very, like, it's assertive like, and outgoing. You're so cute, and, but yeah. you're so, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're a cute little cat, but you could fucking turn to a lion in yeah. a yeah. second. That's and that still that's happens. Such a I'm, good I'm Scottish. <laughs> you're Scottish, that's yeah. all I needed to say. I will yeah. not stop. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's good. I, that's one of the reasons why I like you. Yeah. But um, I, I liked her very quickly, you know, from, um, from starting at that CrossFit gym. And um, I was like, okay, cool. Well, I'm also intimidated by her. So that means I've got some work to do. So I started watching this uh, relationship dude on YouTube. Wait, can you just oh drop, God, no, drop the name of the relationship dude? Because every, yeah, really every fucking boy, man, whatever listening needs to watch this guy. Yeah, his name's um, Corey Wayne. So Corey. I just, I started yeah. looking up like so something really generic, like how to talk to girls or something. And then coaches would cute. come up on YouTube. That's and, so cute, Tom. Um, yeah. And boys need to watch this guy. So well, he's yeah. really good. Yeah. He's I, amazing. I think we should get a crash course. And he was really good. He was just like changing the thing of, you know, it, basically the way my perspective changed with watching that guy was don't try to live up to become someone that this person would want. Try to find your own lane in life and be really excited about being you and if this person's right then she'll all aboard the roller coaster and the train too the tom coaster yeah well just yeah the, the tom coast yeah but um just finding a little bit more um direction in that in that department was really good and um i would just watch those videos not like entirely you know, don't want to paint the picture that was like, Siobhan's like on my wall, fucking praying to every <laughs> night. Shrine and he's yeah, this praying and, yeah, yeah, but I mean, I'd be lying if I said, you know, at least 30% or something wasn't because I'd like to um, pursue this one. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, he was really good. And then um, for me, it was just about, right, okay, time's right. Then we started hanging out a little bit closer. And mm, yeah. It's quite natural. Yeah, we were definitely like me. We were like, we were friends for a long time for as like well. Probably yeah. like a year before, I reckon. That's really nice. Yeah. We were. We yeah. were. And that was cool. We, we just, we did get along oh, yeah. as friends so for a long well. time. Mm. So well. And it was just so easy because then when you go into the relationship, we both knew exactly everything about each other. And we yeah. were both like dating different people while we were friends and we would talk about it and Tom would be like, I need to break up with this girl, but I don't know how she to. She's a bad woman. She wasn't a bad woman. <laughs> she, wasn't. she wasn't a bad woman. She was lovely. She was lovely, but I think she just Tom had different the bad interests. Man. I was the bad oh, man. No, yeah, because I, I didn't. I didn't break up with her appropriately. Oh, you know, shit. I just kind of let that one seep her out, which is and terrible. That was not the advice oh, I gave. But that's you, not. No. I was giving him advice about how to break up with her nicely. Yes. You know what? I think though that like, and I mean, I've done the same thing. Like, I've been a bad woman. <laughs> Hashtag. This would not be a thing. This Says is, like, is a bad woman. I'm gonna start saying it. I'm gonna stop saying it. Stop saying it. I'll, I'll keep saying. <laughs> <laughs> what I reckon though is like we you know, t I mean, obviously you guys didn't meet on the dating app. You know, you, yeah, had, yeah. you had that respect for each other that you're already friends. You already know each other. There's no way you're just gonna rock up to the gym one day and Tom's just gonna like blank you. Yeah, and you're yeah. You're gonna be like, oh, we're not together anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it would be but, hilarious walking like that. Tom, so, I can see your hand in front of your eye. No, you can't. Suddenly he's just like with another girl and you're like, oh. Yeah. I'm yeah. usually going to be like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> that was weird. Anyway, guys, bring around the whiteboard. <laughs> Tom? We, we did have to hide it though. Yeah, we did. No, so that was like when we first started dating. Or just so people didn't fucking talk about it. All the yeah, time. I said yeah, that. I was like, I literally don't want people to ruin a good thing. Oh, and we kept yeah. it. People do. And then I that. said, because we worked together, I was like, you need to tell our boss first before anyone else knows. And was that like a couple of months? Nah, that was three and a half weeks. And we were even... <laughs> a couple of months. <laughs> do you remember what happened? <laughs> Pretty much. No. What the fuck's in this kombucha? <laughs> LSD. Anyway, that's how we had to keep it for a while, mm -hmm. but it was fun. Mm -hmm. It was really like fun. Sneaking around for ages. That's real cute. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was good. It was, yeah, good. It was good. But when people knew, they were like, fun gold. Yeah. But it was interesting because uh, your visa was coming up. 
So we had to make a bit of a yeah. leap of faith. Yeah. And, um, oh my just, god, are you guys married? Forgot yeah, we're, we're kind of married, aren't we? Yeah, kind of. Oh yeah. my god, seriously. Yeah. yeah, we've got like, we're officially, we had to like register Registered. our relationship at like births, deaths, and marriages yeah. as, oh, as wow. a relationship. So you can do that without actually getting married? Yeah. Yeah, oh, we didn't oh, have we a celebration or anything. <laughs> we went and got a Zambrero. That was a lovely <laughs> night. I'll never forget it. <laughs> yeah, that's I forgot. Yeah, because I got a job offer in New York. I was actually going to oh leave and yeah. work in New York. And we yeah. were kind of like, shit, like I just, happen. hang on, you chose Tom over New York. I know, I, I know. know, I know. Can you remember that? I was six. The time. You're a six. New York's an eight. No, I thought we were, I thought we were all eights. And we decided on yeah. the last episode. Yeah, Siobhan, we did. I think Siobhan's like probably nine and a half, ten. Yeah. Probably, yeah. To be fair. I'm probably a strong <laughs> five. So I'm above average, but I've got a lot to grow into. Oh my God. I'm certainly not strong New York. Strong five. Weeks That's ago. funny. But yeah, then we had to be like, right, if I'm staying, we need to get this visa. And I was like, mm. yeah, because we that's how well we got on. We got on wow. so well. And I'm like, this is so different mm. to like anything else. This is like amazing. And then, yeah. I think that's a good testament of like how strong your relationship is that you can have like a fairly intense conversation like that pretty oh, early yeah, on without so anyone early on. fucking having a bit of a meltdown over it. Yeah, it was. That's what, yeah. I mean, because it was. We were forced to have an intense conversation oh like God, that. I know. Well, I think we were that's forced the best to move into it. Yeah, yeah, we <laughs> yeah. did. I, I moved out because um, I was living with dad at the time, and um, that visa oh, you basically guys meant had that. To live together yeah. in order to yeah, yeah for sure. do everything. We had to yeah. write up this huge thing for the lawyers saying like, oh, you yeah, know, be careful what we're saying. <laughs> Oh yes, saying we um. <laughs> saying what? That's such a good point. Yeah, we're just like basically <laughs> proving your re- proving yeah, our relationship. Your relationship. It, but, I mean, you're right, but it was. It was proven we were. Sorry, I know I'm just listening. I said my dad. Dad's not a lawyer. Dad's a lawyer. Uh, actually, Mr. Forrest is our lawyer. We're still Mr. Forrest we're, we're is like, immigration or yeah. a lawyer. Yeah. Ugh. No, but we basically just had to say like this is where our a relationship wants to go and all this sort of stuff, and it's just I like, know. Yeah, we so had no idea. Like, wow. Chat. Yeah. You know what? Imagine like yeah. how if people had to have that conversation. Now, how long were you together for when you had that? A long time. <laughs> Oh, right, sure. <laughs> okay, but say, like, imagine, say, like... I know, You know, true. having to have that conversation. I suppose it's kind of similar to someone getting pregnant, like, yeah. super early on, or yeah. something so like that. True. And suddenly yeah. you're forced, you're going from, like, having a good time, mm. and, you know, you're exclusive, but you're not really, you what know, whatever, doing, yeah. to suddenly having this conversation where you're like, fuck. Yeah. Are we, like, is this a thing? Yeah, exactly. Um, it literally was, though. Like, you had a little bit of a panic, did you not? Yeah, for sure. Well, also, there's a, there's a five-year age difference as well. True. And I, I was, always forget about that. I know. I do forget about that, too. No. But it was I was also, just about to be like, which one's older? And I was like, no, obviously. It's obviously, <laughs> it's obviously me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Siobhan's actually 48. I'm a but 13. But every time, can I just say, I get jarred for ID all the time. Yeah, I know. Everywhere we go, it's like, ID, I'm like, fuck's sake. Tom's yeah. like, fine. Yeah. yeah. No, but it's, it, it's, you know, if I think back on it, it's interesting, like, mid-twenties, I'm obviously really into this girl, but I've only just met her, and then for her to stay around, because there was no other way of her staying around other than going um, de facto, yeah. it's like, is it, like, how am I ready for this? Is Siobhan ready for this? Are we ready for this? You know, um, Siobhan had also had um, previous adult relationships. Siobhan's my first adult relationship. Um, apart from that Hang girl on. I was dating. You're saying you've had child relationships? Child relationships. <laughs> when I was uh, seven, um, me and this lady Beatrice it. were uh, I quite... Think Beatrice. We would knit. You I know, think you we would... long term. Yes, of course. But oh, I also meant adult, oh, though. Cute. I did. Cute. Well, you, no, well I, I never it, really... I, I never had a, a long term adult relationship. I'm going to say Sounds adult. Like it's what... kids. I date kids. Yeah. Adult. Well, if you guys are going to look at it like that... Yeah. A lot's coming out on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Committed relationship, I Amazing suppose. Amazing recovery from pedophilia. Yes, exactly. Dating an older woman. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, but there were lots of uncertainties. Yeah. And we just kind of picked a path and we're like, oh, we've got to make it happen. Yeah, literally forced to make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> I think, like, I was talking to my partner, I guess I'm going to say, as an mm. adult, because mm-hmm. I was saying boyfriend for a while and then I felt like that made me seem like... Have you held a hands child. yet? Yeah. <laughs> I say partner too. Yeah. Yeah, I think partner just makes it like, yeah. That's it's a thing. thing. That's yeah. a thing. Yeah. For sure. Um, he doesn't like holding my head. He likes to pretend to put his arm on me and then barge me off the sidewalk or <laughs> into a wall. Like, he it. likes to yeah, push me down hills. <laughs> Does he like ever throw you into a bush? <laughs> <laughs> when I say partner, I partner. basically mean like violent abuser. <laughs> 
But we don't shit like that. Like, you know, he does. That's his favourite. Yeah, yeah. I pushing me into the wall. Throw me yeah. into a knife. <laughs> It's a nice guy. Well, at least you have to be like adults in adults' relationships. No. Like you, like well, what does that mean? What does that mean? Even adults. That? Yeah. Mm. You gotta have fun. I love it. I can't I remember the time of that before we got sidetracked into yes. pushing what people say? into bushes and walls. Well, we were saying I think it's good to um, sometimes it can be good to just be forced to make a decision. Yes. Oh, that's and right. And try to figure it out. And also, I think where I was going with this was that there's always going to be that level of anxiety. Um, around the, the relationship mm. and I guess for me like I've had like pretty brutal um, trust betrayals mm. <laughs> in yeah. relationships mm. and and I think accepting that like I've got that that's an issue that I've got yeah like I find it really hard to trust and I get very anxious in a relationship um, because of that and but acknowledging that that's like my issue and that that's no reflection on my partner like mm-hmm. that's nothing that he's done mm. but that he needs to know that that's something that I struggle yeah. with yeah. that and should be said like yeah. immediately and that's the literally. hard thing though is I think that you know like baggage is like a bad thing and it's, so not. it's an inevitable it's, it's, it's thing. an inevitable yeah, thing everyone has and it's something at our age well maybe our age yeah, yeah not me <laughs> not yeah. Tom's fine he's had one relationship that's right yeah, one relationship still in year 12 <laughs> I've been for the past three years <laughs> But, yeah. like, everyone has baggage and everyone has shit. And not necessarily, like, they've been with a bad woman or man. <laughs> yes. But more that they've got a, an unresolved issue or they've got some underlying shit from a past relationship. Yeah. And if you're not just upfront about it and say, like, oh, the reason that I feel weird about this is because of this incident, just so you know. Yeah, yeah. for sure. That, if I'm a bit weird about it, that's why. Yeah. I feel like you kind of need to be able to have those conversations. Um, but I feel like we're so like repressed in terms of like you know baggage gets a bad rap. Yeah, and, you know, we're embarrassed. It's, it's embarrassing. Like, yeah, yeah like it's not a thing. thing. Mm. Yeah, and you're always very like I'm always very nervous to like share stuff about my past or past relationships. And, you know, because you don't want to be the person who talks about their ex or the person who has issues. Mm. It's true. Yeah. yeah, I totally get it. But we all have a past, you know, yeah. and it's to some degree as well. This is this is an interesting conversation. Something like that we always talk about on my show as well is that, like, what's classified as a mental health issue is anxiety, which is really funny because it's an emotion. And when you're talking about baggage, you're essentially saying this particular scenario has activated an anxious or a scary memory or something. So you're straight away going to have like a bit of fear or a bit of hesitancy to talk about it because it's bringing up something that was scary for you and when we're scared we don't know how to react because anything we do could be dangerous you know yeah. so when when people say oh you know um i have anxiety it's like well no shit you've had a past your your brain has literally started to interpret you know the world and what happened to you then was really scary what happened to you over there was really amazing and you'll you'll have that you know it doesn't mean you can't navigate a relationship together but you do have to as you would say hold space yeah. Um, when the other person has their thing, you know? Yeah. Um, and sometimes that can just mean recognising it. And other times it can mean, depending on how good you guys are at communication, being like coming back at it and saying, oh, no, you're actually not seeing this or whatever it is. You, you both need to know what the other person needs. Otherwise it's just going to be very just... It's just going to be an awkward situation, you know? Yeah, definitely. And yeah. that takes practice. It takes a while. Cause it you're takes not a lot sure of practice. Like, yeah. It took us a while to like get where we are now, but you Long know time. you just gotta keep, keep working at it. But you gotta want to work at it too. Like you can't have one person in a relationship being like, yeah, they'll just do it all and they'll just talk about their shit. Like mm. you both need to. It needs to be like open, honest, and like you know sharing. And one person talks, the other person listens, and so on. Yeah. You have so to have great. shared goals. Otherwise, it's like, well, why are you doing anything? You know, True. why are we going through all this bullshit? Like, if we don't even have a reason to. I think if you don't see, like, the same future and the same... Mm. So you kind of have to get that kind of out of the way fairly early on. Mm. I agree. Especially, like, when you get older, obviously. Oh, yeah, definitely. And that's the weird thing, because now we're at the age where, you know, I just went to a baby shower yesterday. Yeah. And everyone's... Everyone there, well, most people there, like, were either engaged or married. Mm-hmm. Or they had a baby or they were going to have a baby and, you know... And then there's <laughs> memes. <Graham>? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cut. I've already had one. And it looks just well, like I took, it. I took um, my partner, and we've been together for like six months, yeah. right? And, you know, there's like this part of me that's like fucking freaking out because I'm like, oh shit, I don't want him to think that 
this is what I'm expecting. Mm. Yeah, you know what I mean. And, and he I've probably got doesn't that, think I've that. got that level of anxiety that I'm like, what if he thinks that I took him because I want to have a baby? I'm like, I don't want this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm like freaking out, and he's probably just like, doo, 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 doo. yeah. No, he's, he's probably like, like, I wonder if they have beer. He probably is like, <laughs> he was what just like trying to play with the dogs. Yeah. Oh my God, so I don't think it would have even crossed his mind. No. That, like yeah. I just got that oh, constant overthinking that I'm like. Like the thought of him thinking that made me really anxious. Yeah, and that's like it does. the furthest thing from my mind. Was, you know, I don't even know these people. So yeah, yeah. Like, I didn't know I was invited. Was, no, it was. Were you actually invited? No, it was just a stranger's baby shower. <laughs> yeah. We do this. It's one of our. It's our relationship yeah. day. We just, just go crush. to a random gate crush gate baby crushes. showers. That's awesome. Yeah, but I think it's like because you're so used to people like not wanting to commit and you're so used to people like ghosting and yeah all this kind of behavior that's like super common these days mm. and like i mean you guys obviously didn't meet on like tinder or bumble or yeah. anything like that yeah. i literally always say we're like we're so glad we met the way we did because when we hear of like stuff yeah. like that i'm like i'm so we're actually so glad to be in a relationship like being what? sing like as in being single sounds tough. Like well, it is. the ghosting, yeah. the, oh, the apps. But like, it even gets to the point that it's normal. Like mm. yeah, you know, like, like everyone's experienced it. And even I found crazy. myself saying, like, if I have a friend tell me, like, you know, someone ghosted her or, or whatever, like, I'm just like, yeah, like, yeah, you don't get all like wow. outraged. Don't get outraged or like. I mean, obviously, I'll be like, yeah, what a wanker. But it's not mm. a surprise. It's like it's very rude. Well, that it is very rude. But is like, that common? From for boys to do that specifically. Oh, hundred percent. And yeah. I wouldn't say just boys. I mean, girls do it too. Yeah. Like I've talked to people. Don't do that. <laughs> Stop it now. Stop it. Stop it right now. I'm really interested in that because it like it. it yeah, because we don't all... really hear this stuff because we're in a relationship. <laughs> but it says a lot. It says a lot about where society is in terms of um, what it values. You know, because hundred two, hundred three hundred years ago, we we're all dominated by the Christian way of living, really, especially in the West. And then now people are less and less people um, are theistic and believe in God and all that sort of stuff as an expression of the way you're supposed to live. Because yeah. obviously Christianity, just speaking of Christianity, gives you a way to live, Ten Commandments or whatever it is. I'm not Christian, by the way, but I'm just saying. But when you now live in a society um, that doesn't really have a specific value framework, people feel like they don't really have any... Um, obligation to there's do no anything. There's no accountability. Really. Yeah, there's no accountability. Like even just Imagine the idea. Imagine if you got burned at the stake for ghosting. Yeah, exactly. No Bring one would fucking ghost. Fuck. There'd be fear, but there would be a like, whole lot no of discipline. discipline. Yeah. That's interesting to me I think as well. Because people don't get, they don't get held accountable for that behaviour. Mm. Yeah. So when I was on, <laughs> when I was on Tinder. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, not recently, but quite a while ago. I would actually call people out on this behaviour because I just found it fucked yeah yeah, good. yeah so i just send a message and be like you're rude hey just so you know it's actually really rude mm. yeah. um to like not respond to a message or like if you hadn't had a good time then just that's like, totally yeah. fine but just say hey thanks yeah. for your time mm -hmm. and like it's cool like I'm not someone gonna should make that <laughs> someone should make an app where it's like people who ghosted people who like you know, did all the stuff that you're not supposed to do, and then people can go, go, go on the app and like do reviews, like an Uber thing. <laughs> that would be and, like, really cool. Uber, Tinder review, then, right? Yeah, and then check out the person and, and their past dates and see what people said. Wow, yeah. Tinder review. You heard yeah. it here first. Yeah. 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 Fucking hell, who am I going out with? I know, <laughs> it's like what I would do. cold. <laughs> Literally, I wish like people's. And it was probably different for everyone, but I wish you could like call up someone's like ex and be like, so what were they like? You know, when you move into a new house, I always want to be like, Ask the people that were there before you. So, what's the neighbors like? Is it noisy? <laughs> How's the shower? It'd be tough though, Bonnie, because it's like I know everyone's so different, and it's it, and totally people, sometimes people aren't suited for each other, and all sorts. It's of so things. true. So you true. are brutal. I know, but some people are just dicks, and the world should That's be true. should be told. Exactly, That's there should. True. I reckon someone needs to come up with Tinder review. And if anything, it would probably Dick help the you. dicks because they'd be like, okay, now is the whole world wrong, or am I wrong? Yeah. Okay, maybe I need to sort myself out. Yeah, but those out. are the sort of people who are like, no, it's the whole world. It's definitely yeah, the world. It's definitely yeah. the world. I was born in the wrong world. <laughs> you were born in the Andromeda galaxy. <laughs> I hate that. Yeah, when you yeah when you're born in the wrong world. <laughs> but I think that I guess what it is is like because you're you not actually met someone, you've not had the chance to like get to know them like you guys did. Like yeah, you became true. friends first, and you've got that respect for each other. That's that even true. Even if say one of you decided that 
you whatever you weren't into it mm. you'd have the respect of the other person to actually say it yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah um, you know yeah. whereas when it's on an app yeah um and even no if you've gone on a few dates feelings. with someone or so one of my things this time the last time i was on because that's how i met my partner mm. um you know i was like right i'm gonna go on a few dates um i think i went on like five dates in a week i was just like fuck it I just go for coffee, go for coffee or a meal, like never go for a drink, Mm. um, and always just like have zero expectations with it, and then just be completely honest either way. Yeah, yeah, I had a great time. I'd like to catch up again, or like thanks so much. It was really nice to meet you. I don't see anything Mm. romantic happening, Mm. and you know what? They might be thinking the same thing, and that's totally fine. Um, But I was just like, I'm not gonna be that fucking dickhead. Like I just no. I have a guy mate that he's like amazing on the apps and he'll literally meet someone and then straight away and he's like, no, nah, I just didn't feel it. And he'd message them and he says that the girls go like crazy. What if he says <laughs> I didn't feel it? Yeah. He, he gets like, like just slammed for his honesty. What and I'm like, name? mate, I'm like, you're amazing. I would love to like go on a date and a guy's like, sorry, just totally didn't feel it. And I'm like, cool, next. But then yeah, cool. but he's like, still, I'm like, you have to. Even though they're like, I'm like, you have to keep doing that. Like, it's so, you'll meet, like, the right girls that are just like, yeah, great, thanks for your honesty. I'm like, they just clearly had more feelings or I mean, couldn't it. handle it. But I just love that he does that. He's like, straight away, if he doesn't feel it. Mm. Or if he does, he's like, loved it, do you want to meet? Da, da, da. Yeah. Love it. Well, I just don't see the point in stringing someone along yeah. or having them as some random backup. Yeah, mm. so he gets, weird. like, the opposite. He gets, like, what, slammed people are for, to him because yeah, of that. Yeah, because of that, yeah. Well, I mean, you can say it wrong. You can be like, shit face, nah. Yeah. No, yeah. no, he's so lovely and so Thanks great. so much for the coffee. I just thought you were a four. <laughs> and, uh, I'm a nine. I'm a high so five. We're not so allowed to. This yeah. is your Tinder review. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know. I know. It's crazy. But I guess, like, okay, so when you finally do find someone who doesn't completely suck. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, where to from there? Because it's it's such a fucking process. I saw this um this mm. quote on Instagram actually the other day that was like people are like all about the wedding. Yeah. Um, rather than the marriage yeah. and mm. for me that was like super like that really spoke to me because I was married I'm still actually technically married yeah <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> oh it's great yeah yeah it really makes my day yeah um great, but great it's just another room <laughs> don't like, be a psycho he's actually chilling flower on the pillow and that's what he does on Sundays that's his Sunday pillow that's awesome yeah he's great <laughs> I love it. um but yeah so I and I remember having this goal to get married before I was 30 mm. and I don't know meet why I don't I don't know. There's oh no God. reason for it. I had no idea. Yeah. Like, I mean, fortunately, my ex had proposed to me when I was 29, so it was quite possible. You're like, yes! Fuck him in! Finish line was there. <laughs> I know. But, like, if I look back on it, and not to bag him as a person or anything mm. like that, because um, there was a lot of really good things about our relationship, and I don't, like, have any resentful feelings toward him at all, but... It just wasn't right. Mm. Mm. And if I think about it, like, I knew deep down it wasn't right the whole time. But had this fucking want to get married. I wanted to get married. Just, oh wanted, to have a, just wanted to get married. Yeah. Which is fucking ridiculous. Because now I'm just like, I can take it or leave it. Like, yeah. maybe marriage might be in my future. But I'm not. It's definitely not something that I'm fucking, come on. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. don't, I don't care. Yeah. Like, I just want to be in a committed relationship and happy and be happy and <laughs> yeah whether we have a piece of paper that says that we're happy or yeah. whether we're just happy yeah it's fine it doesn't matter so it's really weird that i had that goal and obviously now i'm annoyingly still married um that's so cool but I focusing like... <laughs> i'm just glad someone thinks it's cool yeah for sure. um, funny. but focusing on like the marriage as in like focusing on like what's your relationship going to look like in 10 years like mm. where do you want to go where do they want to go and mm. like how is that going to work like you guys obviously have your own separate although mm. you're on a similar wavelength in terms of you're living your life to help improve others mm-hmm. which is amazing yeah and you both have that but it's in different ways yeah you know yeah, yeah. so i guess it's about trying to juggle that we're on the same page but we also have our separate goals Mm -hmm. and who's going to compromise on what Mm -hmm. and then that's just literally what you have to do for the rest of your life yeah (laughs) and we've we've pretty much discussed this like daily don't we that's amazing we we, it's not oh you go no we just like talk about it all the time and like we literally both have like we know each other's like day we know like 
we just know every single thing like what that person's doing what that person's doing like we both have our like own individual goals and then we have like our goals together mm -hmm. um, and then our future goals like everything is kind of like so open and honest that we just know everything that we're going to be heading towards and what we're doing every single day um and it's not we've not even like discussed such a thing as like marriage it's just like what are we doing like tomorrow what are we doing it's all about like the goals and how we can help each other yeah i think a relationship is you know it can be complicated you know but it can also be for me everything comes down to why you're doing it you know and i think a really cool relationship is when your best friend who also happens to be very subjectively attractive and objectively um has your back you know yeah. When and you know they have you back because they've just been. Hang on, are you still talking about Siobhan? I'm actually <laughs> still talking <laughs> about Graham. I was like, who's he? <laughs> yeah, himself. I'm actually also married, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, no, but just like yeah, it, it can be simple, <clears throat> and then bringing it down to okay, well, <clears throat> we have decided to be together. <clears throat> Excuse me, we decided to be together. So what do you want to do about it? It's like, well, this is why you know the idea of marriage is I think can be very big for people because it's like well the next step because yeah, you always like, have something yeah, to work towards to strive toward but why yeah. does that have to be the stepping stone exactly. why can't it, it should, be like it should be something that you decide yeah, yeah. It can be together whatever. and it can be marriage for some people and for some people it doesn't have to be no no, no exactly because then you hear of people as soon as they get married or the ring's on they're like fuck and they're just like stuck yeah because, you do hear about yeah, that yeah. 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 yeah and it's, a, it's like well, yeah. <laughs> well we, we heard about it recently as well we've just been told yes oh someone yeah, 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 yeah. You hear about these things all the time because um, people think like, well, I mean, the, the worst thing for a human being is to get to a place where they feel like they've done what they need to do. Yeah, because yeah. what else are you going to do next, man? What's exactly. the next thing? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the thing you have to decide that you guys want to do together is something that you can keep doing every day. Keep yeah. building towards, building towards. Yeah. That's what drives you because to be better. Because marriage is effectively like an end <clears throat> goal. That's right. But then, you know, it's a ready. day. And then, yeah, what are you going to do for the next? Yeah. You know, exactly. Home? Yeah. Yeah. And we, we also, we don't have much room either because we're obviously both very interested in the mind. So if I say something, she might be like, that's your ego. And I'll be like, <laughs> fuck, <Yeah>. you're right. <laughs> or I can, like, we can't, we can't. There's no escape. There's no winning or losing. No. Because we both know where each other are activated and yeah. all that sort of stuff. Like she's into trauma, you know, <laughs> I'm into anxiety. <laughs> Not, not a whole lot of place to no, common interests. Yeah, like, you know that's what well. There's before. no room. There's never mm. room for an argument. It's always a discussion. <clears throat> but people are like, "You guys bicker all the time." I'm like, "No, we literally discuss everything." Yeah. that's why it's so good. We try to we try to sort through things. I wouldn't yeah. say we don't argue because no. arguing is I'm right, no, you're right. Yeah, sorting is kind of like here's where I think you're wrong. Yeah, here's where I think you're wrong. Okay, well that's probably correct. It's just like here's all the places where discussion. I'm wrong. <laughs> exactly yeah well, what do you want to do you just want to be annoying all the time it's yeah. like i mean you can't have a perfect relationship you can't have a relationship that doesn't clash it's it's just so dumb yeah yeah like, the, you are a human being you're going to see the world in a skewed way based on how you've lived and if you don't recognize that you're not right all the time you can't you're not you're certainly not ready for a relationship and you yeah. have some work to do yeah you know and people think they need <clears> to be perfect before they get into a relationship like oh no i need to work on myself first it's like no you can work on yourself and a relationship at exactly the same time i think you, you actually really... ha you, i think the only way you can work on yourself is through a relationship yeah it's I mean, true we have this all the time yeah, they as trigger you. coaches i want to i want to get fit first before oh, i come mate, to your team. Of times what? I've heard that. oh my god how do you think you're gonna get or like fit? i need to get this total before i compete it's no. like no. How are you going to get the confidence to get that yeah, title unless exactly. you compete? Yes. Like, how are you so going to get the confidence to be with someone unless you're fucking with someone? Yes. yes. You know? Yeah. Yes. It's so true. How, like, how are you going to... Because I talk about this a lot on my show. I think I'm trying to think about um, the best ways for self-exploration. Breathwork is interesting. Psychedelics is interesting. Therapy is interesting. Meditation is interesting. The best thing for me has been um, this relationship, open, honest communication. Yeah. Because... I've decided to be with someone that will not let any deception or mistruth or, you know, <laughs> here's where I'm right and I'll what just let that go. About? No, as in like... <laughs> Even if, like, at the start, there were, like, white lies, I think. And I'm like, yeah. And I would 
fucking hate them. Like white lies, I'm like they're still a lie in my head because I've been like because I've because I've been like I just said it was vanilla ice cream. No, it was chocolate. <laughs> yeah, but hang on. <laughs> No, because I've had, like, my like trust broken, too. So a white lie to me was, like, a huge deal. Um, mm-hmm. And then I'd, like, we, we needed to, like, sit down and discuss So the you were, lie. like, the reason that the, the like, the white lies bother lie. me is because I've had this issue yeah. in my past. And you're, like, yes. okay, so you're not just a psycho. Well, yeah, but that was really good because I'd, I'd never had, I've never had any trust issues yeah. in my whole oh life. Oh, my God. Imagine that, guys. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I've never had my trust broken or Fuck. anything. But um, it was really. What's that to like? Me. What is that like? Well, I was ignorant, really. You know. Maybe because... that's like uh, that's such a blessing to yeah. have that. Like that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it was just lucky, I suppose. You know, because I've, I've certainly um, spoken with fellas that have had their trust. You know, it's not a gender yeah, it's thing. It's not just a gender thing. No, no not at all. Sure. There's, there's bad women. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Which um, is the theme of this episode. <laughs> it was yes, it is. It was interesting because um, you know I I never kind of put a white lie seeing as we're talking about it, I'd never put a white lie into the category of lie, which yeah. is very interesting because it both contains the same word. But then when Siobhan, you know, would explain that sort of thing to me, it just forced me to, because it, it came back to the goal, came back to, okay, I really want to be with her. This is very significant for her. I need to check myself here, you know? And um, it wasn't an overnight thing, but we got to a place where we do it. Yeah. And it became yeah. really good now because it's like the more honest you are in the relationship, the more you know the person. Yeah. So, I mean, I know every single thing about you. Yeah. You know? And um, that creates trust because I just know, mm. I, I know you a lot, a lot better. Yeah, but that's just like a thing where that really was like a big deal for me, but like mm. a white lie is literally, it's nothing when you really think about it. Like, but to me, it was a big deal at that time. So I'm like, this needs like... Well, it's nothing know. to people that haven't, had their trust had broken. Had their trust broken, yeah. It's, it's, me, it's it was definitely like big for thing. people that have. Yeah. And that, there's no better or worse. Well, I'm I sure there's things for you that are more loads significant of things. than they are. Oh, oh yeah, want. heaps of things. Loads of yeah. things. Heaps. Loads yeah. of things. Absolutely. And I think it's just about, like, understanding the other person's triggers. Yes. Because I know oh, yeah, you have me, to straight away. Like, um, like, my partner has different ones to me, and mm. when he explains them to me, I'm kind of like, it makes no sense in my well yeah We're it makes no sense in my mind I'm yeah like, why is that weird that's yeah. not yeah. weird but I mean, it's probably the same about my shit like why is that weird yeah you that's know? what this the stuff we figured out at the start as well because you obviously had like your anxiety and stuff and i have my trauma because Absolutely. like trust is is trauma like it's actually a trauma in the brain mm. um so okay i'll give you a quick example right so her we spoke about how that was her issue right for yeah. me when siobhan would start talking about how she wants to like get very spiritual and, and, and speak to her grandma and spirits and stuff. I mean, my whole OCD past is based on <laughs> supernatural and fucking going to hell and freaking out about that shit. Yes. Now, Siobhan would speak to me and she'd be like, what are you talking about? Yeah. I just want to speak to my grandma again. <laughs> and I'm like having a full-blown panic attack. <laughs> and I wouldn't stop talking. I would just keep going. Yeah. And then but we after, had to figure that out. And then afterwards, he's like, look... <laughs> That was like my anxiety. And I'm like, oh shit. And I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like I didn't get it. You just like, understand. just like you didn't understand the white lie. And yeah. that was like in a huge conversation. But yeah. that's how you're so different. But if you work out together, then yeah, you just and come to really, that yeah. agreement. And you have someone that's holding you back. And then eventually it gets to the stage where that's not even a real issue anymore. Yeah. You know? I don't true. have that fear anymore. And Shimon doesn't have that fear anymore. Yeah. You just get through it. But you've got to work together to, like, get through it. So, like, each other's triggers, you know them, and then you work through them, and you help each other. And it's, like, it's fucking cool because you come out the other side not having the triggers anymore. I think knowing that is so important because I think so much of the time we feel like telling someone about our triggers and telling someone about our past trauma or our anxiety or, like, whatever it is, mm. is just, like, super embarrassing and then yeah. it's going to be, like, a bad thing for the relationship because the other person's going to be like, well, you're a freak or you're a psycho or whatever but if you're with the right person yeah they won't think then that. they won't think that. that it's so true so so often we like suppress all this shit but i found that like just talking about it and being like hey you're probably not going to get this but this is my issue because of this reason mm. and he's like cool that totally makes sense yeah. like of course it is yeah like, how could that not be an issue mm. yeah you know and then him on his part he'll be like really understanding of that and he'll be aware that that's a trigger for me. Yes. You know, so, and the same goes both ways. Yeah. But it's just about, like, learning that about each other and actually yeah. taking the time to do so rather than just, like, triggering each other. <laughs> triggering each other. And yeah. then, like, being too, I guess, proud to, like, admit 
that you have like an insecurity about something yeah you know so true and i think the earlier you get that done the better it is oh massively it should be like first date conversations so what triggers you what triggers you yeah cool we know i remember like my first okay so our first date i'm not, I'm not gonna like say his name or anything in case like people are like you know whatever. it's actually my dad <laughs> <laughs> he'll be listening in though so <laughs> 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 I remember, like, one of the reasons that I was so attracted to him was because he started talking about his relationship with his parents Mm. and how much he had found that he had, um, like, grown, like, as a person through the therapy that he'd been doing. Mm. Oh, my God. I know. And I was just like... I love it. Oh, my God. Like, just the fact that he was so open and just had no... There was, like, no sense of, like, embarrassment. Embarrassment. Which there shouldn't be. Quick tip, fellas. (laughs) Talk about your therapy session. Yeah, I had anxiety. Girls, form a line. (laughs) (laughs) But I was just, like... I just hung on his every word because it was just... He was just so open. And it wasn't like a... He wasn't, like, having a sook or, like... Anything like no, that. Just talking all, about he was it. just talking about yeah. it and we've like we haven't stopped talking about it. Yeah. And it's, it's just so good. it's been so good and you know, like just actually listening to mm. to him and like I guess, you know, talking about triggers from fucking the first day. Yeah. 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 Well he's just been real. Like that's what real yeah. humans go through. Like there's no pretend shit or like oh, I'm this type of person or trying to be a person that you think your partner wants. Well that's so the thing bullshit. and that's like so much about like you know, your your Tinder bio or whatever and you're like putting out there your best self and your best photos with your filters and, you know, you're interested in like cool stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? You're interested in stuff that you think other people will find interesting yeah. about you. I, I had um, Tinder um, for like six months or something. I could have been even longer than that before we started going out. I still had the photo of it. I got the idea from my friend. My bio was, I'm bad at sex and I have no mates. <laughs> <laughs> it never went very well. <laughs> I think it was the man's thing. <laughs> but yeah, I was just like, look, I'm going to be brutally honest here. <laughs> Hopefully we got them better. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of nights, yeah. So funny. But, uh, but that's the thing. is like, I mean, no one's going to put on, you know, you're not going to put on tra- interest, trauma. Here are my yeah, triggers. Anxiety yeah. and trauma. <laughs> Here are my triggers. Yeah. Well, you know, you see people that have, you see people that have bios that are like, no baggage, thanks. And it's yeah. like, do you what? Want, yeah. What the fuck? I'm like, well, I guess we just need to like... date Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so true. pretty good history. <laughs> live, live with dad. No baggage, thanks. Yeah. But, like, what? Who Who are you looking for? Oh, like, are you fucking serious? This app, this Tinder review needs yeah, to happen. Yeah, it does need Somebody to happen. Somebody please make it. You know what needs to happen? It's people just being fucking honest mm. is what needs to happen. Yeah. Let's go to the bathroom quickly, guys. <laughs> <laughs> just we'll hold, hold the fort. We'll talk about the There's some honesty though. right there. Yeah. <laughs> now probably... we can talk about fertility awareness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, all right. We're speaking our of, this is so good. So, speaking of honesty, <laughs> yeah. so contraception's a thing, right? right? Fucking tedious. As someone who competes in a sport of, you know, weightlifting and strength is obviously very important. Hormonal shit fucks that right up. So I'm like, yeah. I don't want to put any shit into my body. I don't want to take yes. any pill. I don't want to take any of that stuff. Um, a friend of mine was like, have you heard of the fertility awareness method? And I was like, no, tell me oh, about that. I think my friend in Scotland talks about this, actually. Yeah, so basically it's just like tracking tracking your cycle yeah. and when you're super fertile and when you're not fertile and when you should have protected sex and when you should have unprotected sex. Right. Right. So I was like, okay, I'm going to research this and look into it, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, be very careful about this. Mm-hmm. Dad, since he's probably still, still listening. <laughs> She's careful, Dad. And Tom's dad. <laughs> um, <laughs> We're all careful. We're all careful. No, literally, Tom would have a kid in a second. I'm like, mate, 10 years. <laughs> so this is for everyone who doesn't want to have a yes. child like us. Keep listening. <laughs> um, keep listening to this while Tom's in the toilet. <laughs> anyway, so I was like to my partner, I was like, hey, do you know anything about fertility awareness? Oh, God. He's like, What? <laughs> Fertility? Fertility? What? This is not a conversation after six months. <laughs> no, not at all. But anyway, so there's an example of communication and where that could go wrong um, yeah. and someone could misconstrue um, perhaps what you're actually trying to get at. Yeah, if you're like, I'm trying to protect myself. I'm trying to protect myself. myself from having a child. Yeah. I just said how you would want one like straight away and I'm like 10 years. As in right now? Child, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kane. 
Kane. Yeah. We just got like we've obviously just got our dog Abby, who's like the best thing. Is that watch. holding you for a while, or are you still need? It's all right. I mean, it's hairier than <laughs> what I like to look after. Right. That's fine. I'm like, no. I know. No, I know. I'm so not keen. I know. Well, fertility awareness isn't um 100 accurate, so you might be right. Oh shit! Yeah. As in what? What do you mean? Well, as in like tracking. Tom would not know anything about this. <laughs> no, but I, I, I <laughs> need to. Find out about it when you're you get educated. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When I get pregnant, I'll learn. <laughs> I'm like just super, super careful with it. <laughs> of what? Not having babies. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> no, no. I'm a little bit sneaky. Take Tom's just way sneaky. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Oh, no, I'm not. not. <laughs> That's what we've been to say. <laughs> God, I'm just checking that you're still listening. I'm definitely listening to Tom, something potentially illegal. <laughs> I'm not sneaky. Fucking hell. I'm only police here that. <laughs> anyway, we just got the dog, and I was like, my rule is when we get a second dog, I want two, so she's got a mate. So Tom can also We're not hold off his sneakiness. <laughs> sneaky. Might just jump on the dog. Sorry, God. that's totally wrong. That's also against the law. Seriously. Because it's like immigration, bestiality, oh, yeah. and potential <laughs> unconsensual sex. Yeah, that's right. I think this I was called a relationship a day. Too. Oh, you were called a bit of a oh, <laughs> God. Tom's getting a roast. I'm, I'm, I'll be in prison after this. <laughs> God. High prison cell. <laughs> Terrible. Amazing. Anyway, so the dogs are managing to keep that at bay. Yeah, we're not going to get a second dog. Okay. We'll- a gay. A gay. I think we should. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Our dog's <laughs> actually a female. The second dog we'll get will be a uh, male, so. Anyway. Well, that's my thing. I was like, if we get a second dog, then I would think about having kids. But Tom's like, no way we're not getting a second dog. I'm like, I know. Oh, no kids. Yeah. Oh, wow. I see what you've done there. Yeah. Well done. Very smart. Yeah, very smart. smart. I know. <laughs> but I do definitely want a second one. She needs some eight. Well, then you need to get a different boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I really do love her. Well, with no baggage, though. Cause... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's true. No baggage. You have to be Where would pristine. You find, where would you even find that? Probably below 10. <laughs> <laughs> oh, even then. You have baggage from the womb. <laughs> yeah, you do. A lot of Is people have true. Is this pedophile stuff again? <laughs> yeah. Baggage from the womb. Baggage from the womb. You do. That's true, though. I mean, you have, obviously... Yeah, you do. Yeah. Yeah, Um, you get weird people, um, weird people. You get people having... (laughs) You do get weird weird people, though. Yes, you do. Yeah, there is... I was speaking to a um, trauma therapist who spoke about how um, he was, you know, doing his somatic experiencing work, and um, she just all of a sudden was choking in, in his therapy environment and then they figured out that you know the umbilical cord was wrapped around her neck in the womb and how the body holds on to those experiences it's just crazy really crazy because the the, again like the the brain is just this map of basically what we know and understand and what we find frightening and don't understand yet and when that happened to her she was like coming out of the womb when that happened to her the body the mind has just gone we need to remember that because we nearly died so that Mm -hmm. ever happens again she probably just had like this crazy list of you know claustrophobia and scared being in tight spaces and scared of drowning because all stemming back from that experience before even being born really where she couldn't breathe and that's what i know this is a huge tangent but like doing what the work you do with cultivating self-awareness in breath work yeah learning about the root of your trigger can be so good when you actually continue to move on in the world. Because like, I know this is a trigger. He's not just a dickhead. Or I know this is yeah. a trigger of mine, and I know this is where it came from. Well, you you know, know, your, mind, your mind's going to try and protect you from that same yeah. thing that happened to you again. So That's it's right. going to be like, he told a white lie. He's an asshole. Yes. Where it's like, no, he's just not aware that that is That's a, trigger. a trigger for you. Yeah, he yeah. told a white lie. This, my body is reminded of when my world was torn apart. Yeah, so we both did that in different ways. That really, because you do tend to always choose the same kind of dickhead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when you're conditioned you to that. You, you know. absolutely do. Until you heal, heal whatever. Until you recognise where it came from. Yeah. Because yeah. you understand it. It's yeah. predictable in an ironic sense that you're going to get hurt. And we, we tend to gravitate towards we understand what we understand. Yeah. Even though it's way worse for us because what we don't understand is unmapped territory and it's really scary. That's why people go back to the same person all the time. Yeah. You know? But the more you can understand who, who you are, and we both do that in super, what, different ways. Like I, I went through an, a journey of expressive writing and then Siobhan did breath work. And we did mm-hmm. other things as well. Um, but 
the two most profound experiences to learn more about ourselves and hopefully we continue to. Um, for you as breath work and me was writing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I was just going to say, you were actually in the group with that guy who did the breath work session and came out being yeah. like, and he was, was he in his 60s? I keep saying 60s, 50s, 60s. Yeah, I think 60s. Yeah, yeah. and his, yeah. and he was like so skeptical obviously about it, but in the breath work session, he, he went back to his very first trauma and it was coming out of the womb and his mum passed away giving birth to him and he went straight back to that place during breath work. So talk about yeah, still crazy. being traumatised at that age, but going back, his first trauma, he went back to it. It was, it was like amazing. Like, wow. Amazing he went back to that place. He was so thankful he went back there. Did he talk to you about his triggers? No, but you can obviously guess them from yeah, that. You know, fear but of, that would be a yeah. whole 60 year old. Yeah, that's crazy. Stuff. And had recently had a relationship breakup as well. So wow. I think it was just a big head fuck for him. Yeah. 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 But yeah, wow. crazy. I was also talking to my mum um, fairly recently just about. I guess your cognitive development and how your attachments when you're first born really have an impact on your adult relationships. Massively. In terms of like how secure or insecure that yeah. attachment is. Yeah. And I found that really interesting because um, I guess I'd really have like quite an anxious attachment style yes. to people and I just always assume that people are going to like fail, yeah. basically. Um, yeah. Are your mum and dad are still together? Are they? Yeah, they are. Yeah. But I spoke to my mum about it actually and she said that when I was born, she was really depressed and just not, like, couldn't really engage with me or, like, oh, develop wow. that close attachment with me. Yeah. It wasn't that she was, a, a, like, a bad mum or no, anything no, no, no. like that. That's so all. common, though. This, it was like, just that so she common. found it really hard to, like, bond with me. Yeah. yeah. I guess. I mean, I am pretty annoying. <laughs> <laughs> you had Fair tattoos. And straight yeah. out of the womb. Straight out of the womb. Um, annoying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. With a barbell. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mum, i to leave. <laughs> yeah pretty much so yeah she said that that has a lot to do with how y your relationships like end up when, when you're an adult but also like having had you know probably similar experiences to you Siobhan in mm. terms of trust and yeah you know like being cheated on and yeah. all that kind of thing it all kind of adds up so you end yeah. up just being like oh my god I can't trust anyone everyone's fucked yeah, um, but how good when you know that because yeah. when you realise that that's why. Yeah, yeah, and it's good when you find someone that you can work on that with. Like for me, like Tom completely like understood it, and we went on like a whole fucking journey with it. But he's like, right, I totally get it, and that's what like your stuff is. And then I had to understand because I didn't even know what anxiety was before last year. <laughs> I had no idea what it was. I'm like, what the fuck's anxiety? I just always thought it was a word people threw around, like, oh no, don't do that. That makes me anxious. And I'm just like, oh, whatever, it's just like this word. And then I had to like really try and understand it because I had no idea what it was. Mm. Just like you didn't know what my stuff was. Mm. Yeah. So it's yeah. really good when you can find someone that's like, this is like my stuff that I've discussed with my mom. I know where it came from. And then you can, you know, work with it with your partner. So good. Well, what's really sad about childhood trauma as well is the, the mum is the safe space for the infant. You know, it's that place that they go to or are attached to, mm. to just because they don't understand the whole world. The, the, the whole world is just this whole unexplored place that's by definition fearful because whatever we don't understand, we're straight away scared and then a little bit curious of, and then we figure it out a little bit more and then we, we start to understand it more. And, you know, I mean, we've sat on a chair so often and we know it's not going to bite us or anything that we don't even think about sitting on the chair anymore because it's irrelevant because we know it yeah. but when you're so young you don't understand anything all you have to know is the person that's treating you and comforting you so and even up until five six seven the the, the part of the brain that can analyze and makes it make make sense of things hasn't really formed yet so now obviously you can punch me in the face and be like oh why did that happen? Did Sarah have a bad day? Did I do something wrong? And then figure out why that happened. If I was five years old or four years out, Sarah punched me in the face. I'm a bad person. That was definitely meant for me because it's, you can't, you can't analyze, you know? So when you have, um, attachment issues, you can't tune into the outside world. That's why we do this sort of stuff with our kids because they're learning that happy means happy and sad means sad. He's doing peekaboo. I'm doing peekaboo, by the way. Yes, exactly. Doing, doing this, by the way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that that stuff is so important for developmental psychology because it means that we can start to understand the world, you know, um, in comparison to how we feel about it. Um, and it, it still reigns true in the adult world as well because we that means that we have all this... Um, these past experiences and you know yeah. learning about conditioned responses and 
if I do this, how will Siobhan react? Or if Siobhan does this, how will Tom react? And learning to... But even uh, understanding how people, like, going into past and, like, even, like, thinking about people that have hurt me in the past, I can now totally see why they hurt me because of, like, the way they were brought up or their parents or their surroundings. I can literally give a reason to why they did it. And it's really crazy because now I understand it. And I'm like, oh, that's why they did that. And, like, yeah, you can actually, like, feel sorry for them a little bit, which is really crazy, because you're like, I totally understand why they did it. And feeling sorry for someone kind of takes that power away from them. Oh, yeah, as absolutely. Well, 100%. Yeah, and you can, to- you can actually forgive it, because you're like, I totally get why they did it. Yeah. yeah. Although it, like, completely breaks you, but you can understand why they did it, because you can see how they were, like, brought up, or what they're around, or the type of person they are. Yeah. Yeah, and you're just like, please, I hope they deal with it, or they recognise it, so they don't do it to the next person, obviously. Yeah, but it's pretty interesting stuff. But yeah. you've really got to be willing to, to, like, address all of your shit. Mm. I don't think I was until I had, like, a recent relationship, like, epic fail. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's true and i was like fuck mate like i've got to change something about yeah. where, what i look for in somebody how i approach a relationship what i'm like yeah. in a relationship like i can't change the other person mm-hmm. like at all no. so the only thing i can change is me how i like isn't that annoying oh mate, Just wish she would cook wish more. It, so <laughs> much. but you know what also i found really interesting which i heard on another podcast actually which was like a relationship podcast yeah it's like treat anyone that you're seeing like they're the one yeah and i don't yeah. know whether i believe in the one as in like you've got literally one person who you're yeah, destined no. to be with like i, I wouldn't say that'd be agree. so annoying mate how the fuck oh, would that be yeah my one's actually in nairobi at the moment i just can't <laughs> afford to get over there but I'm keen. It's the worst. <laughs> it's the worst. I just hate that concept. Yeah. But, I mean, treating someone, I guess, that they're someone that is really significant. And yeah. Like, you know, um, you're willing to compromise. Mm-hmm. You're willing to... Well, you're not always like, oh, there'll be someone afterwards. No, so, and yeah. not constantly yeah. looking like the grass is always greener. And yeah. I think I've, I've often found that in the past. And what I was just saying to him, actually, last night was like... The reason that I feel, um, I feel so good now is like I don't have that underlying feeling that this is wrong, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I've always had this underlying feeling in pretty much all relationships that I've had. I think mm-hmm. yeah. that it's not, it's it's just not right. But that's something that I've always kind of suppressed, mm-hmm. you know. And I don't know. I guess that it is something you kind of always are aware of deep down. Yeah, yeah definitely. If that's like your kind of normal feeling in relationships that's my normal feeling in relationships and so I'm constantly always looking out for someone better or you know and that's exhausting keeping an eye on those DMs you know yeah yeah it's gonna slide in yeah yeah they might be the next one yes but I don't have that feeling I don't have you know like if I get a DM now I just ignore it yeah yeah (laughs) yeah. ciao well you can what's really cool is that you know when you um engage a relationship with someone that's willing to um, admit when they're wrong, but also admit when they're right, because it's good to be right. You know, yeah. you know mm-hmm. what I'm doing is working, but check their ego essentially. Um, is that you can make that grass greener. You know, you guys can work on yourselves. Yeah. And like with, focus on that. Yeah, with yeah. the way the brain works and how we mirror each other and imitate to learn and all that sort of stuff. If if you're off, Tom, I just read this incredible book, or you did this, or you did this. You know, the person you're with is who you're going to become. You know, um, you are the you know the five people you spend the most time with. Yeah, that's so true. You can become a much better person if you're spending time with someone all the time that is incredible, um, wants to learn more, wants to grow more, wants to take over the world in their own way, they're going to take you on that journey. And um, If that's what you want. If that's what you want. Yeah. But, yeah. but whatever you want, pick the person that is in, into that too, you know, and then you guys can take over the world together, you know. Yeah. It's, it's good. And you have to... You have to you have to respect yourself enough to be like, I actually am worth this. You know, yeah, exactly. so often yeah. we just fall back into terrible patterns. Yeah, hundred percent. Because you get you get so used to feeling like so fucking shit mm. and being made to feel like that mm. and yeah. allowing yourself to feel like that and kind of thinking, I don't deserve any better than this. Yeah. Like, I don't deserve someone or who's just gonna normal. be faithful. Yeah, it's this just is normal. normal. Yeah. yeah, like it's normal to feel so fucking anxious and fight all the time and yeah. be constantly irritated by the other person. But it's fucking not. It's yeah. not It's normal. not normal. No. Like, of course you're going to argue. Of course there's going to be times when they piss you off. But, like, it shouldn't be the, like, day to day. Exactly. Yeah, you should You should have more good days than bad days. And, yeah, then, then it's obviously a testament to 
how you guys are going, you know? Um, just that objective awareness perspective. It's like, okay, we keep talking about this and fighting about it. Um, what am I doing wrong here? Yeah. What are you, like, it's, I, I'm clearly adding fuel to the fire here. Like, I mean, I, the, one of the first things we did was um, moving into with Siobhan was the first time I'd moved away from my parents because I was just living with dad at the time. And obviously, two fellas, we're going to, you know, live in a space that's different than when you're, like, living with someone else, especially someone you love who also happens to be your girl. And then what was really funny about it was um, I would clean the house in a certain way and Siobhan would just leave, um, like, the spray and wipe out in all this sort of place. And I was just, like, getting really annoyed at that. Because I was like, I know what you're trying to say. You're basically saying that I'm not cleaning in the way you wanted to. And then, anyway, we had the conversation. She's like, you're not cleaning it well. And I'm like, well, I'm cleaning it the way I do it. She's like, it's fucking shit ass. Look at all this. And but even just little things like that, um, I wasn't cleaning it that well. <laughs> no, I, I still mean, don't even know how to do bleach. He still doesn't clean. How's this right? I Friday night, so. he was over, and we were just like uh, sitting on the couch having a cup of tea. Yeah. And he like looked at, inside of my mug and is like, "This is disgusting. Did you ever wash this?" I was like, "Yeah." He's yeah. like, "I was like, it's just stained. That's just what they look like." And then they're old. He's like, "It's not fucking stained. It's dirty. You just haven't cleaned it." Yeah. Um, they've got scour out. I was like, "Yeah." He goes to the sink. Oh my god, did he clean? Gets it? a scourer yeah. and fucking jiff and just like <laughs> scrubs my all of my mugs. This is not a euphemism. Yeah. This is like my <laughs> I want to meet cup. I want to meet this guy. Right. Yeah. And he scrubs them and no I think we're all shit. Going out with the wrong person. It looks yeah, like no, a seriously. fucking brand new cup. And I was like, oh my god. Yeah. Like, what have you done? Can yeah. you tell? Can you go and spend a day with Tom? Mm. I. <laughs> my fucking wine glasses I pull them up and they actually look like your window <laughs> maybe he should like, go to the window if he's yeah. paint I'm like what the yeah, fuck the window just came like that yeah that's, that's how that's, that's how we I literally like. was like what the fuck like that's not clean I'd be like holding it up turning it around I'd be like there's a stain there yeah, and I feel I like I've just not really realised that I've lived by myself for so long that I just I'm like yeah I'll drink out of a dirty mug yeah yeah like, it's I fine. Can't I'll drink out of a toilet bowl I'll handle it's <laughs> what <laughs> nah it's, no, the, it's, the one, it's probably still our one that's thing terrible. that I'm like mate seriously yeah but I mean, you're always going to have those things, right? Oh, yeah, always. It's just about being like, Tom, you're a lazy shit. Yeah. Yeah. And, or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> he does. He literally does. Every single day, I'm like, look at this glass or look at this. And he's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> he just cops it. I'm like, why don't you just do it better? And then I don't have to like, just be better. Just be better. Just be better. Yeah. Just be better. But yeah. I like tight. So my thing is like, I turn the kitchen taps so tight that he can't loosen them. I don't Because get it. I don't. Be stronger. Yeah. Because I don't, yeah. I don't want yeah. the water. Wasting like the water and it dripping. But it doesn't no, drip. That's annoying. It's so it annoying. does drip. That's annoying. It drips. It doesn't. It doesn't it does. drip. <laughs> we'll, we'll 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 film it. We'll film it and then send it into the but podcast. But any stay tuned for the resolution of this argument. Yeah. The tap drips. Yeah. But now I don't even real. Now it's such a habit. I don't even realize I do it. I know. And every time he's like, the Siobhan's, tap is yeah. too was too tight. I'm like, well, I don't even know. Well, I think you need to work on both your grip strength and your cleaning skills. I know. I know. Tap strength. And I don't even like tap lift strength. anymore. But still got the grip strength. It's true. It's true. He do. He do. You still train? Yeah, a little bit. Get to forty five. Yeah, true. Yeah. Walk just, the dog. Just not as heavy. <laughs> yeah, walk, walk You pick dog. up Abby. No, no. Look, I've done all my lifting. Sorry, Sam. So now you can it. just prepare for childbirth. <laughs> yes. <No> wait. <laughs> I'm preparing for my second meal. Get that tap strength happening. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess if we're going to kind of sum up, I guess, your guys' like success in your relationship, continued success in your relationship, yes. unless you break up in the car on the way home, yeah. like the tap. How could you say that? Get out! <laughs> and the wine glasses. Hire like, yeah. a cleaner. Imagine if we did break up on the way home. That'd be the best podcast ever. Drive into the driveway wrong. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. I know. We'll do one anyway. of those like afterwards, like they do when they're like Tom and Siobhan broke up shortly yes. after the podcast. Yeah. And they're now both on Tinder. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God. Tom is still bad at sex and has no mates. <laughs> Siobhan is reviewing everyone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, anyway, God. Siobhan loves beagles and trauma, so yeah. that's interested. Beagles and trauma. <laughs> anyway, uh. um, well, personally, I guess what I've learned um, in relationships is to uh, go after someone who shares similar values, Yeah. Mm. not hobbies. Yes. So values, not hobbies. 
um, and to just be as honest as you can from as early mm. as you can. Yes, 100%. And just, it's scary, but it's worth it. Yes. I guess. 100%. Yeah, there's three things relationship um, therapists talk about, which is honesty, yes, um, a shared vision. Otherwise, you will unconsciously just think marriage is the be-all and end-all. You yeah. won't continue in life, so you'd have to have a shared vision. Um, and then also physiological relaxation. Is so, that sex? Yeah, sort of, <laughs> sort of. Although some would argue it's not entirely relaxing all the time. I know, where did that come from? Yeah, but you, ha- you have to be living in an environment that's physiologically relaxing. So, you know... Like a clean house. <laughs> With clean mugs. Clean, clean mugs. Glasses. Clean wine glasses. Taps wound tight. <laughs> no dripping water. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, but... that last one? In an environment. Physiologically... Com- tight, tight mugs. Tight, tight yes. mugs. Tight mugs. You, so you have to have tight mugs. I love how you know that. What? <laughs> that you have to tighten your mugs. Calming area. I'm going to keep repeating that one. Yeah, Every time I see mugs. my dirty wine glasses, I'm like, excuse me? What yeah. do the relationship therapist say? What's number Throw three? Throw it out. So is this like, as in where you live? Like yeah. basically where you live? Or Environmentally like, uh, stress, lo- like lower like your good, stress. As in like so you a don't good wanna, workplace, good comfort home or something? Well, yeah, you, you don't want to, you, you want to do your best to try not to bring it home. If you if you have to bring it home because it's just on your mind, you have to you talk about it. You know, hey, I need a vent for four minutes or whatever it is. Oh, like but about work. your environment oh, okay. needs to be yeah, stressed. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this tight, loose mug. <laughs> yeah. Fucking... <laughs> Anyway. It's not just work, So don't though. bring your shit home. Well, you have to feel... Physiological relaxation makes you have to feel relaxed. Because if you're wound up, you're going to interact with each other in that True. wound up way. Yeah. So you have to feel calm. And obviously, this goes into whole different sorts of things. But you have to go on dates. You have to remember why you're in the relationship. And you don't Day want to become friends or work colleagues and you know yeah. all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, you need to feel stress-free or low stress when you guys are talking together and chilling out. Um, cool. Because it gets really clear. Gottman Institute, if anyone's interested. Oh, yes, they're a good one to follow. What's it called? Gottman the Institute. Gottman John Institute. Gottman and yeah, his yeah, wife so founded good. the institute. And can I just say one more thing? When you're in um, relationships, find out your partner's love language yeah. immediately. Do the love language test. Oh, okay. So oh, this is good. We should talk about this. So, good. so this, I mean, this caused many a fight. For example, mm. if your love language, so what are they? There's, is it five? Six, is it? Is it? Oh, no, maybe it could be so wrong. So it's gifts. Touch, time, um, words of affirmation. Words of affirmation. Is, yeah. Shit, is there four? Gifts, touch, quality time together, words of affirmation, and isn't it like buying dick. on a dick? Implants. <laughs> <laughs> and dick. Don't really remember <laughs> saying yes to that one, but. <laughs> But yeah, we did it together, didn't we? Yeah, you've that's got to do it. applying or receiving. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but oh, what I found Time was the mug. Like, you know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, everyone's got like everyone's two. got different, and you've got different ones that you value. Yeah. So someone else may be like always giving you gifts, but you might really just want them to say "I love you." Yes. Yeah. Or whatever. Yes. Say that they're important to you. You know, so you may be not really like appreciating that that's what they're doing yeah but they're just have you done it have you two it. done your love language thing no i'll oh, do it tonight or whenever you're saying you have to do it it's online yeah. it's really just, good yeah i get some of the boys it's an actual test. counseling as well yeah. yeah it's so good to do in a relationship because you'll know exactly what his is and he'll know what yours and then you can like work on it yeah mm-hmm. or yeah you just know yeah so you're good. totally right though like you know you'll say oh you never say i love you and the person will say, well, yeah, I do. Because I buy you all these gifts. Yeah. Now, obviously, you're technically correct. It's like, you don't say I love you. Yeah. But it's like, I'm showing you I love you in a different way. Mm. And you need to know that. So it's like, if Sh- Siobhan doesn't have to, isn't actually buying me a present or something, but um, if it was, I would be able to relate that to, oh, she's telling me she loves me. You know, yeah. even though mine could perhaps be chilling out with each other. And we're lucky because both of ours happen to be your one is my two and yeah. my one is your two. Yeah. So we can kind of... Yeah, you just know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it just comes down to, I mean, you have to know the other person. Like, just get to know them on a really deep level. And then if you guys really like being together, build that, you know? Or you'll work on their love language because you'll know what it is. Yeah. Yeah, definitely do it. It's fun. I got my mum to do it with her partner. It's really cool. Yeah. yeah. All right, there's one to try, guys. Yeah, do it. And I think also focusing, just like with anything, like, I mean, I always relate stuff to training because that's 
what I it's do. It's practical. Yeah, but but like not focusing on the total, but focusing on the process of getting the total. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, don't focus on the wedding. Focus no. on the marriage. Or focus the on the dress. Focus on the dress. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'll be wearing it. <laughs> Should be wearing pants. <laughs> so we've know. got uh, gifts. Uh, what was the fifth one? I think there's actually seven. Oh god, hmm? seven love languages. Five. Oh, I don't know. Where's your phone? So, it's um, up there. It's we'll no, put it's in the no show. phone's day, guys. It's relationship day. I know. Um, yeah. No social media. Um, yeah. That's right. Well, so we've got we've got five to seven yes. languages. Yeah. Just um, Google it. Dick was a dick is not one. Yeah, I think it's an eight. <laughs> there's eight. Yeah, it's the eighth. <laughs> anyway, it's like the sixth sense. Yeah. <laughs> Or you should do it even yourself to find out what your love language is. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. We'll do it together. Yeah, we'll do it. Okay. Yeah. Um, Make it a date. A love language date. Love it. Yeah. Guys, you brought just so much positive relationship energy to the podcast. Thanks. Thank Hopefully you so we much. Together. Yeah. We're going to break up shortly after. <laughs> my love language Imagine isn't... what to say it. And then I can get my second beagle. Oh yeah! Oh good! Oh, yeah, good! Yeah. yeah. Jesus. Tom will be. I know what I'm not wanting. <laughs> Tom will be on Tinder. Yeah. yeah. Interests, anxiety. Yeah, that's right. With a heap of baggage. Yeah, with a heap of baggage. No baggage though. Yeah. Yeah. No baggage, just anxiety. I love it. Love I'm freaking it. out right now. How's the date going? I'm just nervous. <laughs> Thank yes. you so much for sparing Thank your you. uh, relationship day um, on the podcast. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Any Sarah, last words of wisdom? Uh, no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Just work on your shit. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Clean your that mugs, both metaphorically yes. and physically. Yes. Clean your mugs. Clean, Clean your mugs. mugs. Yep. Thank you so much, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, if you are more interested in listening to Tom than me, which that's totally fair, he has his own show, which he has mentioned several times. The Clean the Mug podcast. Uh, <laughs> actually, hasn't actually kicked off yet. It's called the Mind Mate podcast, and he interviews some very interesting people. Um, and if you want to work on your trauma with Siobhan, yes, um, go to the Breathwork Shed, and um, yeah, you can scream into a pillow. Yeah. And or just th- remember, the trauma isn't necessarily what you think it is. No. Yes. Any fear-inducing experience that created the self-limiting belief. Is that how you would say? Yeah. It just, oh, what a yeah, definition. There's so many little things. We, that could be a whole other podcast. Well, how, would you, anyway. how would you define it? Oh, I don't know, because it can just be so... What, what you said. <laughs> <laughs> What Tom right. just said, guys, that's yeah, why he has his own show. Out. Yes. And right. And I don't. And it's yeah, not happening. That's fine. <laughs> cool. um, have an awesome Sunday, guys. Do spend it with someone you love. That might be your partner. That might be your cat. And that's also fine. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they're both the same thing. If your partner is or your Tom, cat. Tom's dad. <laughs> Bye.